What's going on everybody? My name is Jamie Fenn and in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to do this hyperlapse door transition in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I'm gonna leave some download links down in the description for the video files so you guys can follow along step for step in this tutorial. And with that said, I just wanna give a big shout out to everyone who supported this channel up until this point. You guys are amazing. I'm really surprised over these last six months how well everyone's kind of come together to make a sweet DaVinci Resolve community. And I'm super excited to help be a part of that. Without further ado, download those files and let's open up DaVinci Resolve and get started. All right, so you're gonna download two files. This is the first one. And when you get it, this is just normal speed. So what you have to do at first is speed it up. So what I'm gonna do is right click and go to Retime Controls. Come over here to the end where you see the little double arrow. I'm gonna speed it up, I don't know, to like 700%. Maybe even a little bit faster. Let's go to like a thousand. I'm also going to reverse it. So I'm going to right click on it and go to change clip speed and reverse clip. You can also change the speed here. You don't have to do that first step I showed you. Either way works. So now we have this. And just FYI, we can do this effect and then you can change the clip to reverse or go forward. However you want to go. I'm going to go reverse for this example. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to stabilize it. So I'm going to click on that clip, make sure I'm on that specific clip, come over here to the inspector and click on stabilize. You can change this to similarity or translation, play with these settings. I'm not going to really get into that right now. So I'm just going to try the most basic default setting. All right. So this is what our stabilized shot looks like. It's not perfect, but this will do. Another thing we can do is actually right click on it and generate optimized media. That way, it will play better on your computer. It is a 4K file that I included, so it may have a little trouble playing this back. So maybe you wanna change your timeline resolution to 1920 by 1080, and also change your render cache to the ProRes LT if you are on a Mac. All right, so once you've prepared the clip, you want to right click on it again and create a new Fusion clip. So come up here and click on new Fusion clip. Make sure the playhead is over this specific clip that we're working on and then come down and click on Fusion. So the first thing we want to do is go to the point. This is the timeline here. We want to scroll to the point where we want the doors to be completely closed. And I'm going to go to right about here. I'm going to go to about frame 26. And I'm going to attach a polygon tool to the median in. I'm going to come over here and click on Invert. And I'm going to come up to the corners here and select this whole door frame. And what I want to do is make sure that I keyframe this all the way to the very beginning of the clip. So I'm actually going to work backwards and I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm going to mask out this entire section all the way to the beginning of the clip. Okay, so once you've gone and masked all the way to the very, very beginning of the clip. It'll look something like that. And we wanna to go to the point where we started the mask and we wanna go one frame past it. And what we wanna do is actually keyframe the size just so it doesn't continuously keyframe throughout the rest of the clip. So I'm gonna to go to the last keyframe that we masked. I'm gonna come over here and click on size. This keyframe size right here, this diamond. I'm gonna go one frame over to the right I'm going to turn that all the way down because that's when the doors are going to be completely shut. So now we have this. Okay. The next thing I did is that I came to the last keyframe here and I'm actually going to copy and paste this polygon node and the median node here like that. And I'm going to connect it with a merge node. And I'm going to put this median connected to the merge node. I want this to actually be on the foreground. And then I want this to be on the background. And you'll see why. So the next thing I want to do is click on this polygon and invert it. And the next thing you want to do is actually come to the polygon that we've already masked. And we want to bring this over like that. And we want to make sure it's right down the middle. And now what you have to do is keyframe 
the middle portion of this all the way to the beginning again. But at least you have half the work done. These two points will stay the same, so you can just click and drag these two and go frame by frame like that. And then do that all the way to the very beginning as well. All right, so once you've masked all the way to the beginning again, now we can do some animation. What we want to do now is click on median one right here, one underscore one, hold down shift and press spacebar, type in transform. Now we want to go to the very beginning where we did our keyframing. And we want to go to the point where the doors are all the way closed. So that would be, in my case, frame number 27, as you can see right here. And I want to click on transform and we want to keyframe the x-axis of what we've basically masked and layered on top of each other. So I'm going to keyframe that to be closed, which is that. And then I want it to be open all the way at the very beginning. So I'm going to drag this over until it's out of the window. I'm going to go a little bit past. And what's cool is like, okay, so you have like the basic concept here, but the door is really far open still almost all the way up into the last second. So what we can do is actually come into our spline, click on the transform, and we can round this out like that. So the door opens and it starts to close as soon as it starts to come into the frame. So we can adjust this and go to the very beginning. And we can just play with this curve until the door starts to show a little bit like right there. We don't want it to go back and forth. Sometimes that's what happens when you do this effect. See how it kind of shows and disappears. So I'm going to Go like that, adjust this out just a little bit just to let it kind of fade in. And now we have the door closing at a good rate. So this is half the process. Okay. All right, let's close the spline window, close the inspector. Let's copy and paste the first polygon one and median. Paste it right here and bring in another merge node connect the merge node here okay and then what we want to do next is actually copy and paste this row of nodes here bring it here drop this merge node like that all right so the next thing we want to do is actually delete this transform because we don't want this layer to do the exact same thing as the layer before it and since we have this polygon already keyframing we kind of want to get rid of that as well and what we can do is copy and paste this polygon from the original keyframe that we did from the very beginning paste it to there and now what we want to do is do the complete opposite on this side so that means we have to come back over here, click on invert, and we're going to have to keyframe out now from keyframe 27 for me. And we're going to have to go to the very inside again and do this now to the beginning like we did with the clip before it. All right. So once you've keyframed that all the way to the very beginning, it's time to do some animation for this as well. So let's click on that median node, one underscore one underscore one, hold down shift, press spacebar, and type in transform, add a transform node there. And what I like to do is pretty much kind of like what we did on the first door. We want to click on the center keyframe diamond and go to the very beginning and move this door out of the way so it's not in the frame at all. If you look up at the viewer window, you can actually see that the door is on top. So we actually need to flip this layer around. So this is connected to the foreground, and then we need to connect this to the background. That way the door is layered properly with the foreground, so it's kind of hidden behind the actual building.
So right now the doors are actually sliding in at different times. So we have to come up to our spline and adjust the curves to somewhat match each other as best as we can. So let's go. And you can see here that the yellow and the green is the polyline. We don't want that. We just turn that off. The one with the curve is the one that we adjusted. So we actually want to just turn that one off and adjust this so it's somewhat similar to the other one. Now what's nice is that you can just come up here and look in the viewer window and kind of look at the distance of like the handles here and see how far away they are. So if it's, you know, you can kind of match it up. And then you can also look at the transform, turn it back on, see how close those lines are together. And it, it's pretty close. You know, you can mess with it. You can adjust the lines so they are almost identical. Okay, so the next thing I actually did was add some motion blur. So if you click on these transforms, there's an option under the inspector. We can do that for both of these transforms. So we have the door on the left and the door on the right. We'll start with the door on the left, click on the transform one, come up into the inspector and click on this second option icon here. And down here, you'll see an icon that says motion blur, select that box and you can turn up the motion blur to how you like it. Now, if you crank it up all the way, it looks much better. It does take longer for the computer to render it out. And I recommend doing the exact same settings for both motion blurs on both of the transforms for each of these doors. So this is the sliding door style. And now I'm going to show you how to do like the revolving door style. And since we already did the majority of the work for this concept, all we have to do is replace two nodes and do some animation. Those two nodes are these transform nodes. Now, unfortunately with the transform nodes, if you try to do the angle and rotate um, the aspect or the size or even the pivot, there's no, there's no way to like really rotate the doors in and out. So we have to use a node called DVE. So what we want to do is delete the transform node off of the first media node here, the door on the left. We want to add a DVE node where we've had the transform. So DVE and with the DVE node selected, we want to animate the pivot. So we want to go to the last frame that we animate where the doors are closed. And we want to move this pivot over to the hinge of where we want the door to be hinging in and out. So if you actually look right here on my screen, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a little green X. And what we want to do is keyframe that little green X to always be on the hinge. So pretty much on that black mark that we kind of keyframed. And you can go a couple frames. You don't have to go every frame, but it does help to go at frame by frame. One, two, three. For the big motions, you'll probably want to do every frame, but for the small ones, you could probably get away with doing every three or four or five frames. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is a pretty quick motion, but you should try to get it as close to that hinge point as possible or where you did the masking, which I did on the hinge point. And when it goes out of frame, I'm just kind of guesstimating as far as the distance. Okay. Now that we've set our pivot to be on that door hinge, what we can do is go to that frame 27 that we ended the keyframing on as far as our masking. And we want to animate the Y axis of the door. So I'm going to click on the icon here, this keyframing diamond next to the Y, and I'm going to come to the very beginning of the clip. And I'm going to rotate it to the right. So it's, the doors are closing from the inside out. Okay. So now this is what we have. As you can see, one is rotating and one is sliding. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other door. Add a DVE node here. Keyframe the pivot point to the hinge or where you did the masking. Okay. So I have keyframed the pivot. And now I want to keyframe the door to actually open and close. So go back to keyframe 27 where the mask ends. Come down here to the Y axis, select the keyframe icon. And I'm going to come to the very beginning of the clip and rotate the Y axis to the left. 
and go to about 150 because I think that's what the other one's at. No, the other one's at 90. So I'm going to go to negative 90. The last thing you can do again is add some motion blur to the DVE nodes. So make sure you come up to the inspector, click on the motion blur box and adjust your motion blur to your liking. And this is the final render. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.